Hey everyone, Vegetarian Zombie here again. I want to welcome you back to my Intro to Twine series. And in this video, we're going to be covering dynamic linking. So why would you want to use dy dynamic linking? Well, instead of talking about it, let's just dive in. So here we have a, our story from when we last worked on it. I'm going to create another passage. And let's just call it the hallway. So you want to leave your room and you want to be able to walk into your into the hall. So down here under the living quarters, I'm going to create a new link to a passage. So here we have yellow lights lead off to the hallway. Simple as that. And you can see it creates this new passage for us. Very nice, very easy. And then we can double click and we can start adding content here. So I'll do that right now. Okay, very simple. We have the hallway rocks and sways with the unnatural motion of the station. Okay, so if we come back to living quarters again, you can see here we created the hallway in this regard. This is the standard way that I've been introducing you how to create links. You provide the link here, and then you provide the actual target of that. So if we see this in action, if I hit press play, we're just gonna open your eyes, we're gonna roll out of bed, yellow lights lead off to the hallway. We click on that and then the hallway rocks and sways with the unnatural motion of the station. Perfect. Well, there's some other ways you can link as well. And if we open up this, we can actually come down here. And what I can do here is I can put an arrow like so. And this is just another way of doing the same thing. So if we run this, open your eyes, roll out of bed, you, you go down the hallway and so forth. And it works exactly the same way. Also, if we come back here, we can do this inversely. So if I want to do something like this, I can do hallway and put an arrow like that. And this will do literally the same thing. So now this hallway is the target and this is where the text, this is what the text will read. So let's run this again. go down to the hallway and you can see it works exactly the same way. It's ultimately it's an it's it's preference that determines what you should use. I've been using Twine since the Twine let's say 13 or 12. So I've always been making my links the old-fashioned way. But again, it's really what works best for you in your workflow. So we have this all set up. Now let's say in the hallway we want the user to check their inventory. So let's create an inventory passage. So here now we have this inventory and let's populate it with some objects we're holding. I'm just going to populate it for one, but you'll get an idea of what, what else to do. So here we're saying you are carrying, and now I'm going to put an if statement for the batch. Okay, so now we have our link to an inventory. So a link to the items description. So what this will do, ultimately, as I add items to this, I'm going to then print this out. And as you can see, I made a typo there. I'm going to print out this item here so that you are carrying. And then what it says, if the badge is carried is true, then I'm going to print out the text your, and then we're going to add a link to the badge. And in this link, you can see we have this open brace, and this is all the code that we want to run when the user clicks on the link. And we're going to set the selected item to the badge, and then we're going to send them to the item description using the go to, the go to macro. So you can see, if this is all new to you and you're very confused, then check out the previous video on data maps. 
So here we have it. So this is all set. So let's see how this works. Let's give this a run. So we're going to open your eyes. We're going to roll out of bed. And let's take the badge. So now without a stray thought, you stuff your badge into your pocket. And now we're going to go into the hallway. The hallway rocks and sways with the unnatural motion of the station. Let's check your inventory. Okay, so I made a, a mistake. I'm going to go back and fix that. Here we go. I forgot to close this quote. Let's try this again. Okay, let's check the inventory. And here we are. You are carrying your badge. Very simple. Now, I'm curious to know what my badge looks like. Say, for instance, if the description has a clue that I want the user to sort of sort of dial into, they'll select that and they'll say, you need your badge to access all areas of the station. Well, okay. So let's click on done. Oh, look at this. We're now back in the living chamber. So we're, we should have come out here in the hallway. And if we see the reason for that is if we go into the item description here, you can see it's done. We have a hard-coded link that's sending, sending the user back, sending the player back to the actual living quarters. Well, we don't want that. We want to send the user back from wherever they came from. So we're going to have to take away this hard-coded link and make this a dynamic link. So the very first thing we're going to do in order to create that is to create an actual another variable. So I'm going to come up to my asleep passage, and this is kind of where I've been setting all my variables. And I'm going to create a new variable just underneath here, right next to it. I'll just call this, we'll call this set, and we're going to call this previous passage. Like so. So now I'm going to, this will hold the value of where the player was just last located. Now if I come to my hallway, or actually, excuse me, my inventory screen, we can set, say that when the user clicks on this link, we're now going to set the previous passage as the inventory screen. So we'll do this right after this go to macro. So here we're saying set the previous passage to inventory. And this name isn't an arbitrary name. It's actually matching this name right here because I want the user to come back to this passage. Now, in order to make this work on both sides, I'm going to copy and paste this. We'll close that, and we're going to go to our living quarters. So let's see where the badge right here. Badge is carried. It's going to item acquired. And what we'll do is right after that, we're going to say previous passage is, can you guess, the living quarters. And to make this work for the tablet, we'll copy this as well. And I'm not too sure about the order of operations here, so I'm actually going to put this before the go to statement. I haven't tested this out yet in this this order. But let's cop let's cut that and we'll just put that right before that. And I'll do the same with the other passage as well. Because what might happen is the user might will select the select set the selected item, and then what might happen is it may send the user off to the item description and not run this set command. So we just want to make sure it always runs. So now that we have that, we have the variable set in both places. Let's go down to the item description, and now we're going to remove this link here, and we're going to add an entirely new one. What we're going to do is we're going to create another link. And we're going to call this done. And then inside this, we're going to put an open brace. And now we're going to use the go to macro. macro and I'm just going to put in previous passage, just like that. And now, if we close this, you'll notice that this passage is now separate from all the others. And in a way, this is really nice because we can put this off to the side. We don't have to worry about this being a part of the user, the player flow. This is just a passage that we're going to be calling on demand. So let's see if this worked.
So we're going to do the same, roll out of bed. And we can look at the badge, and let's see if this worked here. Your badge access all areas of the station. And we made an error. So let's come back and fix this. Oh, I put it in the wrong area. Like so. And what I'll do is I'll just remove that from this. Okay, let's see if this worked. Now we're going to select the badge, and then you need your badge to access all areas of the station. We click Done, and now we're back to where we started from. Now I'm going to take the badge, and then you can see the badge is gone. We're going to go into the hallway. We're going to check our inventory. You are carrying nothing, and then we can select the badge. You can see we get the item description again. We click done and then now we're back to our we're back to our actually inventory. Now let's create one more little bit in this. Let's say in the hallway we want to add an airlock. And let's just say we can give the player an easy way out. So here we have our new airlock. I'm just going to write a little bit of text here. So here we have this airlock. If the player wants in the hallway, they want to go to the airlock, they can open the airlock. And again, I don't think a station would just allow you to open an airlock without setting any proper standard uh, pressurization standards or what have you. But it says you open the airlock and you are sucked into space. Here, we'll add a U. And are sucked into space. Your remaining life is brief and filled with pain. Huzzah! The end. So let's give a player a way to actually restart their game. Now we can do a link, do it the old-fashioned way that you've, I've been showing you. We can do the link, we can put done, and then we can say, or start over. And do everything inside here like so. And then put our go to go to macro, excuse me, and we're just gonna say here we'll come up here and we'll do a sleep. Do it like this. Go to a sleep. So you've seen this, and this will work. So let's just try this out. Open your eyes. Roll out of bed. Go in the hallway, let's open the airlock. Boom, I'm dead, let's start over. And then we are we start basically back at the beginning again. And you'll notice that all these variables will be reset. But what we can do, instead of using this link go to, there's actually another macro just for this situation. So I'm gonna delete this. Actually, I'll keep it open so that you can see the difference. And I'm gonna give this, I'm gonna call this link go to, like so. And now I'll just give it a name. And we'll say start over. And then I'll put comma. And now we're going to do a sleep. So you can see it's similar. There's less, you don't have to put in any brackets or anything like that. But this does literally the same thing. So we can do like that. And you'll see it. Let's give it another play. Airlock, you can see start over. And here we are again. Now you may ultimately want to send the user off, say, into another website. Say, for instance, you wanted to give credit for something, or you want to link back to your homepage where you have other stories. You can do this again with the link, and you can. There's another macro called go to URL, and this is how you use it. We're going to create another link, and I'm just going to write a little little note. If you enjoyed this game. We'll say, please donate to Twine for more. And remember with the link, we're going to put an open bracket. And now I'm going to use another macro. And this is go to URL. Like so. 
Now this link here is from the creator of Twine, which is why I threw that in there. So we can come down here. We'll open your eyes. We'll do all this sort of thing. We'll walk in the highway, uh, the hallway, and I'm just can't take life anymore. I'll open the airlock. And I made a mistake there, but you can see I clicked on it, and bam, we're here at this. Chris uh, Klimas is the the developer of Twine, the creator of Twine. And let me just fix that one last one last time to see what went wrong. Here we go. I forgot the closing closing bracket. We'll try it one last time. I'll close that. If you enjoyed this game, please donate to Twine for more. You click on that, and bam, now you're at Chris's donate page. And if you enjoy Twine, I highly suggest you do. But that is working with dynamic links. So now you have enough knowledge, just think. You've learned how to work with data maps. You've learned how to create passages and how to work with variables. And now you have dynamic links to make your passages dynamic. And you can really start making some dynamic games. But I not to not to worry anyone, we're actually just getting started with this, this tutorial series. Ultimately, later down the road, we're going to be covering some other data structures, such as arrays. We'll be going into hooks and some other aspects of Twine that will also ultimately make your games really powerful and uh, things that make them that your users will love. And finally, you know, when we get through all that stuff, we're ultimately going to go into the various story formats as well. Because right now we've been using Harlow, but there's also Snowman and Sugarcube, and I'll ultimately show you how you can convert this story into these other two formats. These provide you with a lot more power. This is where you're coming to this with in, with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript experience. But Harlow is a great way to learn how to get rolling with Twine and so that you can create your own stories very easily. So one's not better than the other. It's just what suits your development practices or your writing practices.